Uh, Mr. President, our delegates and friends, it gives me great pleasure uh, to speak today at the launch of the ALP Reconciliation Action Plan. As I understand it, this is the first Reconciliation Action Plan, or RAP, that has been developed, negotiated and agreed by any political party in Australia. I acknowledge the work of my colleague Linda Burney and her team for pulling this plan together. And I acknowledge our leader, Bill Shorten, and the National Executive for showing leadership to bring the party to this point of cultural change. Reconciliation Australia has been an important guide and facilitator in the process, and they're committed as as they are the designers of the RAPs, and they have moved beyond the simple acknowledgement and into transformative change. This RAP sets out a significant and powerful challenge for the party. It will be a challenge for us to meet the obligations we have set out in the RAP. It will be to fully and completely make this party the party of choice for First Nations peoples. And the party of choice... <clears throat> and the party of choice for voters across Australia who yearn for a decent, responsible and committed government. A government which respects the contribution of our First Nations to Australia commits to establishing a voice designed with First Nations peoples and enshrines the voice in the Constitution. <clears throat> when we have a Labor government, a strong union movement and First Nation peoples at the table, we can achieve real change. Of course, in the complex history of our century-old Labor Party, there has been many proud moments where the Labor Party, the union movement and the First Nation leaders have joined together in the struggle to make right what was wrong. It is entirely appropriate that the RAP document highlights the events of 1966 and the Wave Hill walk-off. Then the Gurindji people led by Vincent Lingiari, took industrial action and walked off the job in protest at unfair, unequal and unjust working conditions. It is important to remember that the Australian Union movement, including the then North Australian Workers' Union, helped the Gurindji men and women as they sat down for years in the strike camp. They sustained them in their struggle the truck they drove down the rough roads from Darwin and Catherine is now in the National Museum. The Waterside Workers' Union raised funds and the Metal Workers' Union sent supplies. School children donated their pocket money. The unions gave Vincent a voice in the big cities with the help of the Australian, with the National Union of University Students. The story of the Wave Hill walk-off to Waddy Creek has become a story of First Nation workers against the huge British cattle baron, Lord Vesty. But it was also a battle by the workers against welfare, the name of an all-powerful department intruding into the lives of, that the First Nations peoples led. Welfare was continuous, continually urging the strikers to leave Waddy Creek and sit down at the welfare settlement on Wave Hill. They refused to do so. Vincent and his comrades had a clear vision. They wanted their land back, they wanted equal treatment, and they wanted to work for the building of a new uh, economy, 
that they could control and enterprises on their own land. They did not want welfare. As a Labor Senator, I'm proud that our Labor Prime Minister at the time, Gough Whitlam, was the Australian leader who helped the Gurindji make this story a key part of the larger Australian story when he poured the soil of this country into the hands of Vincent Lingari. And the then Prime Minister said, I want to acknowledge that we Australians still have much to do to redress the injustices and oppression that have for so long been the lot of black Australians. And Vincent's reply to Gough back in 1975 was far-sighted. Now we can go forward as mates. The challenge remains for the nation to own and share the vision of Gough and, Vin and Vincent. Vincent's vision for fair treatment, for real work, real jobs, has yet to become a lived reality. The current government is not committed to ensuring that First Nations Australians get fair treatment, equal wages or job security. The community development program put in place by the current government in remote communities is discriminatory, punitive and ineffectual. We have opposed the government's amending bills to supposedly reform this program in the parliament and we'll continue to do so. And a shortened Labor government will abolish the current CDP and replace it with a new program. <clears throat> this will be a community development program that creates jobs, meets community needs and delivers meaningful training and economic development and proper working conditions. It will deliver community development as it was meant to be and as Vincent would have wanted. A program that gets back to community control and direction. These new arrangements, of course, will be worked through on the principle of co-design with First Nations peoples. This wrap is not just a plan, not just a pretty document, not just fine words. It is our challenge to us as a party for us to make this plan a lived reality, a point of transformation. The challenge I put out to you all and everyone at this important conference is that what can we do to make this wrap a living, breathing reality for Labor? Each of you can help, of course, by getting a shortened Labor government elected, a government that will step up to the challenges of working with our friends and comrades in the union movement, a government that will step up to work with our many supporters in the broader movement, a government that will get up and work with those who want a fair go for all Australians. And most importantly, every Labor supporter can help elect a shortened government that is ready and willing and able to step up and work in partnership with First Nations peoples to deliver long overdue justice and equality for the nation's peoples, First Nations peoples, and to develop a voice and to deliver constitutional recognition. To achieve this, not only do we need a shortened Labor government, but we must first get the First Nations peoples must be on the electoral roll to vote, not only for us, <clears throat> this is a challenge not only for us, but for First Nations, if they want to vote in any referendum to entrench the voice. Kalia.